Hello everyone, March W13 here, and today we're checking out the Briscoe Western Art Museum right on the Riverwalk in San Antonio, Texas. And this place is chock full of Western art, but also includes a few offbeat treasures like this taxidermy bobcat. And the museum is comprised of three floors. They recommend you start on the third floor, which is where we're starting. There is an elevator for those that don't wish to take the stairs. But you'll find that these rooms are separated into distinct elements of Western heritage and the Western experience. This one dealing with saddles and guns. In general, each room will have some sort of thematic centerpiece and it will be surrounded by sculptures and paintings that suit that theme. In this room, the centerpieces are a genuine covered wagon and an industrially produced working windmill, both from the 19th century. And this sculpture really reminds me of Remington's Bronco Buster, but for all you art lovers, although this museum has no Picassos or Monets, I think you'll find an entire world of cowboy and western themed artwork you may not have realized even existed. And these are some real giants in the western art world whose paintings fetch in the many tens of thousands of dollars. And the sculptures and paintings span the centuries. and. Given their smaller size, smaller at least than the huge frescoes and wall-sized paintings that you might find in museums like the Louvre in Paris, you can really pack a lot of art into a relatively small space in this museum. I think this sculpture is particularly striking. It doesn't even register for me as Western art at first glance. It's from Fritz White, who was a Korean War vet and also played football at the University of Cincinnati. Go Bearcats! And this here is one of several paintings from the Chinese-born Texas artist Xiang Zhang, and his cowboy paintings can fetch upwards of $50,000 each in a gallery. Every display here is so thoughtfully curated. These saddles, for instance, span different cultures and epochs, including Mexican vaqueros from the early 19th century. Now, China plays a prominent role here by way of Spain in that Spain traded in the Philippines in the 17th century and they acquired goods like trunks and pottery from Chinese merchants which ended up in Spanish colonies like Mexico and Texas. And I thought having Santa Ana's sword here on display was interesting. At first, I assumed it was the same sword he carried with him during the war against Texas independence, including at the Alamo, but this sword was actually presented to him by an American sword or knife manufacturer for mostly advertising purposes many years after Santa Ana's days as a general in the Mexican army. Santa Ana, in fact, lived in the United States for a time and did the lecture circuit, if I recall. But anyway, this room is really devoted to the Mexican dimension of Western heritage. And then there's an entire room devoted to the Battle of the Alamo, the Alamo standing only blocks away from the museum, and the centerpiece is this scale diorama of the battle. There's another similar model at the Alamo itself that I remember visiting as a child, but this one is a bit more recent. I think it was created in 2013, but it basically fully represents the Battle of the Alamo, which occurred in March of 1836, when something on the order of 2,000 or so Mexican soldiers laid siege to the Alamo mission, which was defended valiantly by 200 or so Texians who were fighting for independence from Mexico. And the uniforms of the Mexican soldiers are faithfully reproduced here. They seem to have been patterned after the French Revolutionary Army, and of course Santa Ana always fashioned himself as the Napoleon of the West. We also see the iconic facade of the part of the Alamo mission that remains standing today, which at the time faced inward into a courtyard, and its characteristic hump at the top was not added until it was later converted to a storehouse. But some 500 or so Mexican soldiers died in the Battle of the Alamo, and of course all of the Texians lost their lives, including Jim Bowie, 
William Barrett Travis, and of course the famous folk hero Davy Crockett. And each of those famous individuals are among the 200 or so defenders of the Alamo that are fully represented in this diorama. You may be able to find them all. The walls of this room are adorned with artwork depicting the Alamo. as well as a Mexican cavalry uniform and an infantry drum from that era. And Mexican army generals uniforms from uh, the era of Texas independence around 1836. But of course the diorama is the real star of this room. Nonetheless, this sculpture called The Line depicts the moment when Colonel Travis drew a line in the sand and he asked the Texas Army members to step over that line, thereby representing their commitment to die for their cause at the Alamo. The museum is actually housed in the original San Antonio Public Library building, which has retained many of its ornate design elements. Here we're looking down into the main lobby and an enormous sculpture by John Coleman called Visions of Change. This Wells Fargo stagecoach is a replica of the many thousands of such coaches in operation in the 1800s. And of course, the Wells Fargo stagecoach now forms a common version of its present-day corporate logo. This second floor room is lined with yet more contemporary paintings and you'll find any number of media on display, uh, oil on canvas of course, but also paintings on boards and other materials as well as this elaborate watercolor that you see in the foreground on the right. Is beautiful. Native Americans are, of course, well represented. And if you cross the second floor footbridge to the sister building, right now you'll find an exhibit on contemporary Chicksaw art called Visual Voices. And it has paintings, pottery, textiles, and metalwork, among other things. And then downstairs off the lobby is a smaller room with additional Native American pieces on display. Including this mold for the Sacagawea dollar coin from Glenda Goodacre. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me on this tour. I highly recommend this museum for an in-person visit. You won't regret it. Until next time, March W13, signing off.